Hello, Life Guardians. This is Gavin Bebelow, the Director of Solution Engineering and Product Development here at Lifeguard Solutions, bringing to you a special edition in our webinar series. Today, we're going to be focusing in on the COVID-19 response toolkit that we've made available for free on the App Exchange. We're going to take you through a little bit of uh, the high-level information. Um, go through a little bit of a PowerPoint presentation, then hop right into a quick demonstration of some of the applications that are included with this toolkit. So with that being said, put together a little bit of an agenda here. We're going to hit uh, by the numbers and take a look at the historical comparison. Then we're actually going to go through and get an understanding as to what an organization's role is within uh, the entire pandemic and how they can properly manage that information. And then lastly, we'll get into the demonstration of the application itself. So first things first, if we take a look at by the numbers and a historical comparison, we can see exactly where we currently stand um, in recent history with diseases that have affected the uh, global um, <laughs> global outlook, regardless of where you are itself. Um, most of these individual diseases that have um, affected the global economy at this point, um, they've been essentially all over the world. Um, it's a, with the exception of one being MERS, which is regionally based in a specific area itself, um, all of these diseases, all of these individual afflictions have uh, affected multiple different countries at this point. Um, taking a look at the case and death rates, yes, uh, we are well above the, the established norm, so to speak, if you can say that, um, from any one of these other diseases. But if we look at the fatality rate specifically, um, we're well below that. So what this ends up telling us is with the proper individual insight, with the proper individual um, proactive actions that can be taken within an organization itself, this is where you really come down and you really actually get the understanding of making sure that, again, things are being taken not only seriously, but you can actually get a complete level of um, understanding of your current application or your current individual environment and how to properly manage that. So with that being said, we take a look at an organization's role and we've broken this down into three distinct areas. First of being the proactive management and awareness. So bringing not only recognition of issues that are coming um, or actually at the uh, individual site itself, but making sure that individuals are aware not only of what their responsibility is, but also how do we ensure that, again, we minimize and or mitigate whatever risks there may be to our employees? And how do we ensure that, again, at the end of the day, we're taking as much individual care as possible for someone to actually go through and feel safe within their environment. Next area is management's role and response. So what actually happens if something does happen on a site? How is that being recorded? How is that being documented? How are we ensuring that at the end of the day that the system or you can manage the response itself rather than having the issues dictating what the response should be? Um, so again, we can go through and although it's a reactive individual scenario, we want to be able to take proactive steps out of that specific scenario itself and be able to essentially manage the process from that point forward. Last area that we have here is continual improvement. And, and this kind of goes without saying, between the reactive and proactive scenarios, fairly self-explanatory, but the continual improvement essentially is what drives the interaction between the two environments. So being able to go through and again, whether it's something that's reactive that happens and then you're taking the proactive steps to avoid it happening again, or you're going from that proactive um, individual area itself and even if you've done all the proactive steps right, something ends up happening. Um, and again, kind of looping back as to what you need to improve. So again, continual improvement is essentially something that's going to be um, resident within all of the individual applications itself. So in saying that, as I said, you have your proactive and reactive side. You have your continual improvement that's going to be happening between the two individual sides of the applications. but First things first, as I mentioned, it's always there. It's always going to be within, built within our applications itself. But we're first going to take a look at management's role and response. So if something were to happen, 
what does that look like in the system? How do I go through and record that level of information? And how do I make sure that it's getting actioned at the right times to the right people? So let's hop into the application and see what that looks like. So team, now that I've gotten into the actual app itself, first thing that I'm pretty good with is a homepage, completely definable by the organization itself. Um, in this case, we're trying to highlight a lot of the individual COVID-19 cases that are coming in um, or individual events in question. Um, so I can see quick high level individual reports and dashboards give me an understanding as to where I currently am um, based on location and what my case load actually looks like. But I can open up into my uh, illness forms itself and again choose any one of these individual um, injuries to actually go in and take a look at. Um, specifically if I open this one up here I'm going to start to see all the high level information. Um, so again, completely definable workflow at the very top. Um, I could start to see all the individual information pertaining to the, in this case, specific employee that was actually affected. We do actually support um, non-employees being recorded as well. So any individual contractors that you may not have in the system, um, you would be able to input that information in as well. Um, again, high level description information, um, address, location, and so forth for uh, geotagging of the individual um, incident itself. Um, with the individual COVID-19 specific information, this is where we get into, well, have they tested positive? Um, has it been confirmed? Is a quarantine required? Um, essentially all of the individual information that I'm looking for specifically for their individual tests and their treatment plan itself. Um, and also their specific treatment location. So did they go to the hospital? Were they treated overnight? Um, if so, what individual hospital was that? Um, but if I scroll back up here, I can get over into my related tabs and this is where I can start to see that level of additional detail. So you can go through and have a high level individual investigation. And with that investigation, this is where we start to identify all of the associated information to this particular instance itself. So as I bring this up, I can start to see, well, what actually happened? Um, why did it actually happen? What was the causation itself? Um, any individual actions or recommendations that we can essentially make at this time? And we can go through and again, we can put uh, associated corrective actions against this. So continually, as things are happening, as we're actually reacting to events, we can proactively start to make changes within the uh, individual organization itself by sending those corrective actions out. It really does come down to uh, everyone at this point. For every individual action, there is an equal reaction to it. So we need to make sure that as we go through these individual events or these individual reports itself, that something positive is coming out, whether it be additional sanitation, additional information, additional training. Um, we need to ensure that, again, we can get ahead of this as much as we possibly can by taking the right individual steps. But beyond investigations, getting into return to work. So at some point to that individual employee who may have been affected, um, they are going to go through their specific quarantine itself and they're going to have some level of return to work authorization, um, being able to go through and record all of that information um, based on all of the associated information available. So quarantine location type um, dates and times, so to speak, as to when they're actually um, supposed to be quarantined for lack of a better term, um, we get into the restriction information. So upon return, what type of duties are they actually going to have? Um, is it going to be reduced hours? Are they going to be restricted from lifting anything or overexertion? Um, again, this really coming down to let's just make sure we have everything properly documented. Coming down a little further, you have access into claims as well. So if there are any individual claims um, to this specific insurance company, again, that can be recorded. Um, corrective actions, as I mentioned previously, all of that information rolls up. So quick and easy access to get into hey, saying, hey, look, there has been some level of incident, um, or in this case, um, someone has fallen ill. What have we done from a company standpoint? Um, how have we gone through and identified how this person has become sick, um, have all that information documented, their quarantine information, any corrective actions um, that are stemming from the investigation or just in general corrective actions, being able to come up with all that information quickly and easily. So with that being said, again, we have a lot of information that we've gone through. 
what we're actually going to do at this point is we're going to take a look at the proactive side. So just before I go on here, I'm going to take us back to this specific slide itself. And what we can see here, again, we've already talked about um, the reactive side of things and uh, essentially driving continual improvement. But a part of that continual improvement itself is going through making sure we have that level of information and getting a lot more proactive. How do we essentially start to deal with the issues um, that may be coming at this point? that we're not even aware of? And how do we ensure that at the end of the day, all of our individual employees are going to be safe? So with that being said, I'm gonna hop right back into the application here. And now that I'm back into the actual application, we're gonna leave the individual incident report, as I mentioned, and hop over something such as safety observations. So this is the ability of your individual employees being able to go into um, the application and if they've noticed anything that may be amiss, it could be something such as hanging wires or um, there's some level of hazard that's actually happened within the um, individual environment itself. Just making sure that that can get reported in um, or in worst case scenario, if someone is breaking quarantine or essentially kind of breaking the rules, so to speak, we want to ensure that that information gets um, put into the system quickly and easily so we can take the appropriate actions. So I can go through and I can create an observation, um, essentially identify what information I'm currently seeing and all the individual immediate um, interactions and recommendations that I've had at this point. Um, we can request some level of investigation, at which point, again, you can go through, identify the specific um, investigation itself, have someone go through and identify specific root causes. And team, let's, let's kind of not uh, make any bones about it, so to speak, um, understanding exactly why things are happening is essentially the only way that we're able or going to be able to proactively manage that information. So having the ability of putting an investigation in, um, drive individual corrective actions from those investigations, being able to really ensure at the end of the day that your observation is not only being reviewed and approved, but also being managed properly. But from safety observations, we can hop into things such as hazard analysis at this point. And with hazard analysis, you can go through and quickly and easily start to see, well, what is actually being assessed? Where is it being assessed? Um, and what's our overall risk itself? So if I open up uh, this one here, and this is specifically um, the spread of infectious disease, uh, what are we essentially looking at? Um, what do, are we actually specifically trying to understand what controls do we have in place? Um, what's our risk rating itself in terms of likelihood consequence and the overall rating? Um, but then coming down, ensuring that we have the proper controls in place, what's currently um, being done in terms of improving that situation and where does our post-control risk stand itself? But being able to quickly and easily identify that information um, on a location by location basis, or you can do this in multiple different ways. But the key here is understanding that level of information and that level of um, detail, so to speak, so we can proactively make the right changes. But team, the last thing that I'm gonna cover here is if I hop all the way over into another tab, getting into something like audits. Um, so proactively going through and being able to understand or see exactly what's happening within any individual environment and making sure that we're proactively, in this case, taking the right steps to ensure that everything is being taken care of. So if I hop into our, my audit tab itself, what I'm gonna see here is, again, an individual listing of all the individual audits that I have for my organization. And I can go into this one here, my room sanitation procedures, and I could start to see some high level detail as to what I'm actually looking at. Um, how often do I actually need to do this, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, um, but I could start to set up my frequency, my start and end date, so to speak. Um, I can come down and in this case, I'm just gonna open up an existing individual inspection um, and we can see what that looks like. We can see all the associated answers and everything that I'm actually doing in this specific individual audit itself can list my specific findings if there are any, and from those findings, create specific corrective actions. 
Um, so again, the entire process is something that you can go through easily, rinse and repeat over and over and over again, create your individual audits, making sure that you have the same or a, a questionnaire that's standard uh, amongst all of your locations. So everyone is doing the same thing. Uh, we're not deviating from the path. We're trying to make sure that everyone is going through that specific process itself of room sanitation in this case and making sure that every individual thing is taken care of. Any individual findings can actually be created within the solution and from those findings you can create uh, specific corrective actions on top of that to really ensure that again we're driving continual improvement within the system itself. But team, at the end of the day, if I hop over into my dashboards, this is where essentially um, kind of the, the ground or all the information comes back into the actual solution itself. And I can pull all of my specific details and data that I want back out. So if I go into my safety dashboard, for example, I could start to see all of the individual metrics that I deem important and what's going to be important to me. So I can start to keep an eye on things like how many individual reported illnesses do we have by location over a specific time frame? I could start to see the peaks and valleys. So in this case, I can see Toronto in January, they had uh, more cases than they had in December, but fewer in February and fewer in, in March as well. Um, but starting to understand what we're cur what's currently happening within our environment, where our outbreaks may be occurring, and how all this information looks in a statistical standpoint, how do we essentially start to make sure that things are getting better? How do we go through and make sure that people are properly in, um, taking the right steps at this point to proactively manage the situation within their own environment? So team, with that being said, um, we're going to be wrapping things up. But just before we do, I wanted to remind everyone, this is all about a cycle of continual improvement. Um, things will end up happening, exposures will end up happening um, as much as we try to have them avoided at this point. But we really want to ensure that anytime that there is some level of exposure, anytime that there is some level of event, we're driving for that continual improvement. We're going to ensure that, um, again, any organization using the application is going to be as proactive as possible and ensuring that those individual exposures get minimized as much as we possibly can. So team, with that being said, um, that's all we have for today. If you have any questions, any concerns, feel free to reach out, let us know. We'd be more than happy to help out. Once again, my name is Gavin Babuel. I'm the Director of Solution Engineering and Product Development here at Lifeguard Solutions. Um, hope to hear from you soon. If you have any questions, any concerns, we'd be more than happy to have a conversation. Have a good day, everyone.